we want to welcome everybody that's watching online and at all of our campuses. And uh, it's just struck me, you know, with COVID and all that we've been going through, there have been thousands more watching online and we've been doing everything from studio and we've been getting this ready to change it. So now that we can do online and do it uh, from one of our venues and be able to change the dynamic, I just want to let you know that we're thrilled that you're watching online. And uh, can we welcome all those that are watching online from here and all of our campuses? Come on, we love you. Thousands, I mean thousands more are watching online. And uh, we'll be tweaking it and changing it and trying to figure it out, make it better and all the changes we've been making. Um, but little, and, little by little, it feels more normal to me. I, I, you know, this is like, it felt normal that I didn't preach the sermon on Wednesday and then preach it on the weekend. I'm just preaching it on the weekend. And I was like, it feels a little more normal. And how many know, week by week, it just feels a little more normal, a little more normal. Kids are going back to school. Parents are happier. All right, they're like, no, we chose the blended option. We're not quite as happy. All right, I get it, I get it. You know, college football's back, pro sports are coming. We're eating out, you know, and, and I, I ate out this week uh, with a couple, Beck and I did. Um, they hadn't been out since COVID started. First time at a restaurant, and it was just like, they came, little by little, we're getting back to normal, and we're moving forward with caution, but not fear. There's a difference. We're moving forward with caution, but not fear. We're being smart. We're doing the right things, but we're not going to be bound by fear. And uh, as we move forward with caution, I just want to let you know uh, about something that's so important for our church. I'm going to take a moment to talk about this. The Fall Life Group, the Hold Nothing Back Life Group that we're doing for six weeks. Starting next week, the sermon will coincide with it. There'll be a separate teaching for the Life Group. Uh, we've been working on this, and we, we want you to do this, whether it's by Zoom, because of distance or health issues or your comfort level. You maybe say, I want to do a, a Zoom life group and do it that way. That's perfectly fine. I want you to sign up. Or in person. It could be a group as small as four in a restaurant or coffee shop that will allow seating. Or it could be a living room full. Again, just using whatever comfort level you're good at. But I'm believing that we need to do this and get a, a, as many people as possible in this. I've just been feeling as pastor that there's been a drift going on. There's been a drift. It's not just, it's, some, it's not just summer drift. It's like drift. It's like COVID, summer, chaos, all this drift going on. And we felt as a church we wanted to pull everybody back in with the life groups and to be able to have us all on the same page. And uh, I'm just believing that this will be something that will help us to be brought back together. So even if you can't meet in purpose, person, let's do it via Zoom. And I just have that thought, like you could do, like if you're like, well, I don't know if I wanna do it in person inside, you could probably do an in-person outside one because this ends before November, okay? And I just had this vision of a bonfire group, life group, serving s'mores, inviting me, amen. Amen. That's like corner of the cops, some more. What am I talking about? I'm talking about food. All right. You know, all right. So if you want to join that, you can go to rivervalley.org slash life groups, or you can go to next steps and you can find a life group. We want to do this. Now, today's message is entitled, Fix Your Eyes on Jesus. If you notice, even in the worship set, you know, many of our campuses, the worship set was on Jesus. I just said, I want, to, I want us to stop and fix our eyes on Jesus. In all that we're going through, we have to keep seeing Jesus. We have been distracted. We have been uh, losing our focus. We have been living in semi-panic. We've been trying to figure out how we're going to solve problems. But we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. And one of the things that people will notice about River Valley Church, we are focused on Jesus. We preach. I had one person call me once. They said on the phone, this is years ago when I answered the phone. Okay, I don't answer the phone anymore. But, you know, and they, they said, Do, are you a church that preaches Jesus? I said, of course. Like, what else would we preach? And they said, well, I don't know. The last church we were at was like Chicken Soup for the Soul and Reader's Digest. I said, no, we preach Jesus. We're preaching Jesus. Like, it's all about Jesus. So we, we've got to preach Jesus and we, we got a little foggy. How many, the other day it was very foggy and it limited my visibility, it limited our visibility. And I was like, sun, burn away the fog. Like the sun need to come out and burn away the fog so, so I could see where I was going. And there might be fog in your life right now. And I'm saying, Jesus, burn away the fog so people can see you. 
I've had other times where I've been in places that are full of smog. I had a chance to go to Beijing on Global Team. We went there, we went to China, and we were there in Beijing. And I just remember, I thought, man, is it ever foggy today? When does the fog burn off? It's like 10 a.m. and the fog is still here. And they said, oh, that's not fog. I said, well, what is it? They said, that's smog. I said, I, said, I can't see but like 150 yards. They said, yeah, that's smog. Blow your nose later today. You'll see that smog. It was like, oh my goodness. And, 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 I, and I thought, okay, wind, wind, blow away the smog. EPA of China, help us out. Get rid of the smog. It, it, it blocked the view. And I don't know if it's been a natural thing or a man-made thing that has blocked your view of Jesus, whether it's fog or it's smog, I'm praying that you can see Jesus. We need to see Jesus. And, and, and I thought about this, like, like fog can be just life's natural struggles, your humanity, but the smog could be the politics, the pandemics, the, the social media, that's smog. And it, it still blocks your view of Jesus. We need to get through that and see Jesus. And so the first thing I would say is we want to have people see Jesus for salvation. See Jesus for salvation. In John 3, 3, Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. He's saying you can't see what God has for you unless you're born again. And we know that you're born again by calling on the name of Jesus, asking forgiveness of your sins. And because you see Jesus and you see what he's done for you and you ask him to forgive you, you see the kingdom of God and you're born again. But you've got to have your eyes open and we've got to see Jesus for salvation. If you're looking at yourself for salvation, all you're gonna see is smog. You're gonna see, I'm a mess, I can't do it. If you think you have to work your way in, you're never gonna do it. You're like, who will deliver me from this person that I am? But if you see Jesus, you see love, you see grace, you for see forgiveness, and all of a sudden you have hope. And I'm telling you, Jesus loves us and he offers us salvation. And when you understand how beautiful that is that he offers to forgive you of your sins, and you're like, I wanna see Jesus. I wanna see Jesus and I wanna call upon him as my savior. And I don't want us to lose it. Those of us that know Jesus as our Lord and savior, don't let the fog and the smog stop you from realizing he's the one that saved you. He's the one that needs to be glorified. He's the one that needs to be praised. See Jesus, he's so beautiful. The other day, and, and by the way, if you don't know this about me, everything in my life was the other day. Did you know that? Like, my wife's like, that was like five months ago. Yeah, that was like the other day, you know. This was five years ago, the other day, you know. But the other day, about, well, pre-COVID, like right before pre-COVID, all right? Like the last trip I was on before COVID hit, I met a pastor, and I believe him 100%. I met a pastor that said, he, he, he actually died. He said, I died in the operating room. And he said, for about eight minutes, I was gone. And he said, I saw Jesus. And, and he's talking to me. And I'm just going to tell you how it happened. Like, we're sitting there having dinner. I just preached at his church. And we're sitting there having dinner. And this man just has a presence around him that's unreal of God's, just the beauty of Jesus is all over this guy. And, and he says, he said, brother, I want to tell you, I died on the operating table, operating table and I saw Jesus. And for eight, it's, it's verified, for eight minutes he was gone and they brought him back. And, and here's what happened. While we're eating dinner, he reaches over and when he's telling me this story, he touches me. He touches me on my arm. And when he touches me, I'm just gonna tell you, like the power of God flows through my body like nothing I've ever felt. I'm just gonna tell you, like nothing I've ever felt. And, and as he's, like the presence of God is so strong as he's talking to me, I just kind of don't want to melt like while he's talking. Like I was like, like it was, it was that strong. And he said, I've seen Jesus. And he said, our savior is so loving. He's so beautiful. He's, so, he's like, take the whole world, stack it up, offer me everything. I wouldn't take it. I want to see Jesus. He's like, do you know how good our savior is? I want to see Jesus. And then I, I, I just asked him, I was like, I, I don't even know what to ask him in that moment. And so I said, when you saw him, like, did you feel, how, like, did you feel guilty for your sins? How did you feel? Like, what did you feel? He goes, I just felt the love of my savior. He said, and I can't wait to see my Savior. And I, he goes, I just, Rob, you just want to see Jesus. 
And, I, and in that moment, I was just like, I, I, I was like, I want to see Jesus. I just, I couldn't help but think, I want to see Jesus, the one who saved me. And I think the smog and the fog of this world, I think the smog and the fog of this world gets me to take my eyes off Jesus, my Savior, and it gets me to look at everything else around me, and I lose track of what it's all about. I want us to get our eyes back on Jesus, our Savior. If you are saved, I want you to think about Jesus more, talk about Jesus more, share about Jesus more. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, whether you're in church or online, I want to let you know at the end of every service, we're really given an opportunity, whether we say it out loud or, I mean, we want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. We want you to see Jesus as your Savior and that he'll forgive you. And I just want to pray right now that we would pray for greater salvations at the end of our service. I think it's been a long time since we've done this. And I want to pray right now. Uh, I want all of us to agree online and live to just be praying. Let's have uh, more people see Jesus as their Savior. Come on, agree with me. Lord, I just pray right now that we would see you as Savior. And when the opportunity is given for people to say yes to you at the end of service, that more people would say yes to you, that they wouldn't look at themselves for salvation. They wouldn't let the smog and the fog of this world keep them away from you. But Holy Spirit, you would make Jesus real to them and they would see that you're a Savior Jesus that would forgive them. I pray that they would realize they can be forgiven. It doesn't matter what they've done. You forgive everyone. And so God, I pray for greater salvation response. I pray for people to raise their hand. I pray for people to respond online and text in for now what? And I'm praying, Lord Jesus, for greater response of salvation. We desire that in this church and online, people are going to see Jesus as Savior. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen and amen. Can we thank God for salvations in advance that we believe? You're going to have to see Jesus as your Savior, but we're going to have to see Jesus more in the storms of life that we're facing. I want you to know that every single one of us faces storms in life, and we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. In Matthew chapter 14, we have the story of Peter seeing Jesus. Well, all the disciples do. All the disciples are in the boat, and they see Jesus walking on the water, which is absolutely amazing, on the Sea of Galilee. And he goes walking by. They think he's a ghost, but then they realize it's not a ghost. It's really Jesus. And then in verse 28, Peter says this, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Isn't that amazing? So we have this story of, of Peter saying, like, if that's really you, I want to... I want to walk on the water and I want to come to you. And in this storm, he says, I want to walk on the water to you. It's absolutely amazing. I've been to the Sea of Galilee, again, with a global team. A global team experienced that global experience. I went to Israel and we're there and we're at the Sea of Galilee and it's amazing. We're on a boat and we're like, this is where he, he walked on the water. Jesus and Peter walked on the water. And it's just amazing. And by the way, one of the times we stayed um, at a... At a kibbutz that was right on the Sea of Galilee. And when we were swimming, we're out there swimming, maybe a hundred yards out. It wasn't very deep. All of a sudden we found this pipeline like going through and it must be a freshwater pipeline or something. And, and it was about three inches below the surface of the water. And we're out to about here and, and the pipeline is there. And all of a sudden my mind just sometimes, you know, it gets me in trouble. And I said, you know what we should do? We should stand on the pipe like we're walking on water and take pictures like we're on the Sea of Galilee. And so we'd have other people on the team just kneel down a little bit lower in the water and they'd raise their hand and then the other person was standing on the water like this. Well, as we're doing that, another tour group from Africa sees it and they're like, oh, 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 and they start putting, and I'm like, no, it's a pipe, it's a pipe, it's a pipe, it's, it's, it's not, don't walk out, oh, this is sacrilegious, oh. So we were not walking on water. We were on a pipeline that wasn't there in the days of Jesus. So they were walking on the water. And, and let's get back to this. All right. And um, that's smog, I guess, smog or something. 
He gets his eyes on the storm and what happens? He starts to sink. And we do that very thing. Jesus says, step out in faith, do this. I'll get you through this. I'll, 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 I'll take you through that. You're living for Jesus. You're, he's your savior. You're like, eyes are fixed on him. And then a storm hits you. And by the way, following Jesus doesn't eliminate all your storms, but it gives you peace in the midst of the storm. And, and all of a sudden you're in the storm and you're wondering, I've never faced this before. I don't know what I'm going to do. And, 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 and what am I? And, and, and you run away. And people, it's an amazing thing. They run away in the midst of their storm. And I'm going to tell you, this is not an exhaustive list. I want you to understand, you need to run to Jesus in your storm. In my life, in our family's life, we have always been running to Jesus in the midst of our storms. Okay, in my life, I was born with a caved in chest and I had to have major chest surgery when I was 11 years old, ran to Jesus in the midst of the storm. My mom had a quadruple bypass. We ran to Jesus. My brother Roger had a head on uh, collision and was in a coma, eventually came out and learned how to walk and came back again. But we ran to Jesus in the midst of the storm. My sister lost a, her child to SIDS. We ran to Jesus in the midst of a storm. My dad's health and he died from cancer. We still ran to Jesus in the midst of the storm. We faced two financial crises, huge ones in this church. We ran to Jesus in the midst of the storm. Our oldest son was born with all autism and we ran to Jesus in the midst of the storm. Miraculously, he calmed the storm and healed him of that autism. Logan was born with strep B and two times he stopped breathing that night. And in the midst of the storm, we ran to Jesus. Becca has battled depression and anxiety. And in the midst of the storm, we ran to Jesus. She also had digestive troubles that we had to go to the Mayo Clinic. And, and we were like, we are running to Jesus in the midst of the storm and got through that. I had a heart attack. And you know what I did? I ran to Jesus in the midst of the storm. That's what you do. That's what you do. Now, I didn't, I shared that list because sometimes you think Pastor Rob and the Ketterlings, they don't go through anything. And I didn't try to make our list worse than your list. Your list probably looks like our list. We're all in this together. God's not like, I really love Rob. And so he's not gonna have any problems. But the guy on row seven, he's in trouble. You don't know. No guy online is real. No, he doesn't do that. We all go through storms in life and we run to Jesus. That's what we do. Matter of fact, we run to Jesus like in our family so much. Like how many know, like even when I was having my heart attack, like I went and live tweeted my heart. I'm in the ambulance. I think we have the picture of that. Go ahead and throw it up on the screen. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm, this is like 12, 11, 14, 737. I'm having a heart attack in the way to the hospital, Abbott, please pray, God bless you, comma. Maybe the comma was like faith that I wasn't going to die. I don't know. People thought my account was hacked, you know, like, I think Rob's account was hacked. No, he's really live tweeting his heart attack. So many people in the midst of the storm, they run away and they quit church. They quit their life group. They stop praying. They don't run to Jesus. They let the fog and the smog of this world crush Jesus out of their life and out of their picture. Don't do that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And I believe this so strong. I believe there are people that are facing storms right now and you need to fix your eyes on Jesus. You need to fix your eyes on Jesus. You need to realize, you need to grab hold of, never will I leave you nor forsake you. That's what he said. He said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Those promises are true. And you could say, it says in your word, you will never leave me. And I'm focusing my eyes on you. And you say, well, I can't see him right here. Use your eyes of faith and believe that Jesus Christ is with you in the midst of the storm. Peter looked at the waves. It even says he saw the wind. How bad is it if you can see wind? That must mean that there was mist that was going up that he could see the wind and the effects of it. And all of a sudden it overwhelmed him and he started to sink. You take your eyes off Jesus and you focus on your storm or your problem. And all of a sudden you're like, man, I'm focusing on COVID, comorbidities, cancer, this, that, economy. And all of a sudden you will start to sink. You got to focus on Jesus and fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. I want to pray for this again. Lord, I pray we'd fix our eyes on Jesus. And I pray right now for the people that are facing a storm. 
They may not live tweet their storm right now, but right now in Jesus' name, I pray that they'd ask for prayer. They'd send it in online. If they're in person, they would go up for prayer. God, we want to fix our eyes on you. You are the one that calms the storms. You are the one that says, peace be still. And so God, I speak that over anyone facing a storm in Jesus' name. They will get through this, they will get through the other side, and they will fix their eyes on you, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen and amen. New storms in life are faced with the power of our Savior. New storms, new storms are going to pop up, new things, new things. No one ever predicted COVID-19, and all, new storms, but we will face them looking at our Savior, and He will get us through it. Now you got salvation, we got storms, I got one more and it starts with an S because I'm a preacher. Uh, it, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus in the stress. And what do I mean by that? Sometimes we think storms are up here but there's everyday stress. And there's one thing I wanna speak over our church and to all of you, whether you're on online campus or in-person campus, you're, you're part of our church. In the stress, in the stress, there's been a daily stress and I will admit, that in all of this COVID world that we've been living in, there's been a daily stress on me. I can't explain it. Many of you feel it too. It feels like my, for lack of better, it feels like my diaphragm muscle is like flipped over and it's in a state of constant stress. And I can't breathe the same as I did before. And I feel like every day, and then I wake up and I, I feel like I have like a tinge of sadness on me. Like I have like a five to 10% sadness and my diaphragms, I, I, like I wish I could flip it over. Like I, you know, and if I go to social media and if I go to the, the politics and if I go to all that, then it turns into like upset stomach throw up. How many know what I'm talking about? But if I, that stress, if I go to Jesus, if I go to the word of God, if I fix my eyes on Jesus in my stress, how many knows, know that all of a sudden it flips around? How many know that all of a sudden the sadness lifts off, but then it finds me around noon again? I have to pray again. I'm just like you. We're all in this together and we've got to, and it's not really a storm. You wouldn't say it's a storm. And you say, I'm saved, and it's not really a storm. It's just daily stress. And you've got to go to Jesus and fix your eyes on Jesus in the stress that you're facing. The world needs you to be walking around with, with, with this taken care of so you can be an ambassador for Jesus. We need you. Jesus needs you to show that there's a calm on you in the midst of the stress, in the midst of the storm, all that there's something different about you. And I'm praying for you and your stress. You, you got to understand there's just stress, whether it's like, I'm not sure we're going to make our budget. I'm not sure we're going to do this. You know, it could be simple. It could be like, I've been stressing about the 25th anniversary. It was supposed to be big, Minneapolis Convention Center, blah, blah, blah. Are we going to get our deposit back? Okay, we got it back. Good. I'm just, I mean, there's just stress. It's not really a storm, but it's stress. And I'm saying what God's word says in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him. I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to cast all my anxiety on him because he cares for me. And I'm going to see Jesus in my stress. I'm going to see Jesus in my stress. I'm going to do what Philippians 4, 6 says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live in this stress. He's my savior. He's brought me through the storms of life and he will get me through the daily stress that I'm facing. And some of you need this. Some of you need to hear this loud and clear. You need to fix your eyes on Jesus. You have been fixing your eyes on other things. Matter of fact, I, I, the other day I, I just said, I, first of all, I don't do Facebook. I know I have a Facebook page. I'm, I've only been there one time in my life. I don't go there. Someone else handles it. The other day I said, you got to take Instagram. I can't handle it anymore. It's, it's taking my eyes off Jesus. You got to take it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let somebody else. It's now a managed account. I have Twitter left. I'm like, I'm pretty close to getting rid of that one. All right. You know why? Because it, it's taking my eyes off of Jesus and it's becoming smog in my life. And in the stress that I'm facing, in the stress that you're facing, I can't afford that smog anymore. I want to fix my eyes on Jesus and I want to shine as a bright light in this world to bring glory to his name, the one who saved me, the one who saved me. And if you need him as your savior, fix your eyes on him. If he is your savior, don't forget that. Remember that, praise him and thank him. In your storms and in your stress, we will fix our eyes on Jesus and he will get us through. You know what the payoff is? We see with eyes of faith now and I'm getting just, 
the thought of this, the payoff is someday we see him face to face. Someday we see him face to face. We have eyes of faith now. We feel the presence of God now, but someday we'll see him face to face. Payoff. Payoff in his presence face to face. So Lord, I just pray right now, again, for people to say yes to you, for us to remember our salvation, for us in our storms. And again, God, I just know there are people that are in storms. I know it because of my list. I know they have a list too. So I pray again, strengthen that storm, help them fix their eyes on you. And in the daily stress that we're facing, God, we will rise above it. We will rise above this. We will fix our eyes on you. Help us to get rid of the smog. I know there are people that even thought when I said it, oh, I could never get rid of that. I could never not be on Facebook. I could never, not. I pray God you'd speak to us. Yeah. Right now, maybe a seasonal sabbatical. That's what I just feel. A seasonal sabbatical for some to say, this has created smog in my life and I just wanna step away from that and ask you, Jesus, to help me to fix my eyes on you. We ask this in your name, Lord. Give us the ability to fix our eyes on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.